So, okay. We just learned that energy can only go from hot to cold. Yeah. The reverse cannot happen, okay? So, now let's talk about this thing called the system. The system is the part of the universe that you want to study. Okay, so when you are doing the experiment, we were trying to study, well, which system in that when we were going outside and stuff? Um, the system probably would be the, the room. The room. Yeah. And so from or the perspective, or you, yeah, yeah. So the system was the room, or Mr. Sam's, and that's the part we wanted to study. Right. Okay. Usually in, a chemo in chemistry class, we're interested in the chemical reaction. Right. And you as a scientist get to define the system. When yes. you are doing something, you say, okay, this is the system that I'm studying. You define the parameters, and then you run your experiment frankly, within those parameters. Frankly, different types of chemists study it differently. Or different types of scientists, I should say. Chemists typically think of the reaction as the system, and physicists usually think of uh, the what we would call the surroundings to be their system. It sort of depends on your perspective. Yep. Not that critical that you understand that distinction. All right. Now the surroundings is well everything, everything else. else. You define the system. Everything else is surroundings. So if we were to think of this particular beaker um, where a reaction would take place, That's if it was flask. an acid, a flask, flask, I said a beaker. You did. And I added something to this, some chemical, maybe a piece of magnesium or something like that. Then this would uh, be the system. System, and the surroundings would be everything outside it. This would heat up possibly or cool down. So the surroundings are the things on the outside. Yep. And together, the system plus the surroundings equals the universe. Yep. There you go. All right. Now, there's a thing called the law of conservation of energy, uh -huh. named by Hermann Humboldt. Okay. And he said that energy can't be created or destroyed, just transformed. And what does that mean? Uh, well, that means we can change it from one form or another, but we can't make it or get rid of it. So, for example, Mr. Sam's just ate the, um, the chocolate. Yep. And so it was chemical potential was chemical. energy. And now it has been converted into most likely heat energy, or it's being converted into heat and, energy and to it, heat his body. If it doesn't, then it's, it's going to go back into chemical energy, and it's going to get stored as fat. That is correct. As chemical energy in my body, which is why I need to go walk an extra mile and a half tonight <laughs> on the treadmill. There you go. All right, so let's talk about exothermic. So there's two ways that energy can be transferred. Either mm -hmm. exothermically, and exothermically is when the energy is released to the surroundings. Yes. This is a classic picture right here. We have a, a crazy scientist. Looks kind of like Woody Allen. He does kind of, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. So it, Looks like my Facebook profile picture, too. Have you seen that? Yeah, I have, yeah. My yeah. big fire. Yeah. And so what we've got is we've got a fire, and the energy, this would be the system right here. And the energy is being released. Everyone's standing back because it's quite hot. It's mm -hmm. kind of a big fire experiment. Yep. And these are the surroundings. So it's going from the system outward, and that is called exothermic, when energy is released to the surroundings. Right. Okay, I think we should actually do our own exothermic chemical reaction. I think so, too. These are a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Today we'll be doing an experiment in which we make a flash powder from silver nitrate and powdered magnesium. This is a highly water-sensitive compound. Uh, that'll give a nice, really bright flash and a quick explosion um, when you drop water upon it. So, we've got our first small little bit of magnesium powder right here, which will be grinded up, well, not grinded up, which will be mixed with our silver nitrate. We've used very small amounts of both, as you can see. As you can see, this paper towel here is what we'll be using to mix them, since we want a very low friction environment in which the chemicals can slowly uh, roll over each other to create a compounded mixture. Uh, we don't want to induce a lot of friction, and we just kind of want to let them settle out as they see fit so we get a nice even mix without stressing it much. So I'm going to go ahead and pour um, the magnesium and the silver nitrate in the center here and then slowly fold the paper towel both directions in a manner called diapering so that the chemicals slowly roll over each other and create our mix. Here we go.
So now that the chemicals have been diapered together to be mixed some, I've placed them in this little aluminum foil containing thing. Um, as you can see here, they're sitting there in the middle, so we'll take this outside so that we're safe as possible with this, and put a drop of water on it and see what happens. We are now going to test this reaction. So in this particular reaction, when the water hits the silver, the silver becomes molten and catches fire. As you can see, it flashed extremely brightly. Uh, this is an extremely unstable reaction, so never try this unless you are properly supervised.